So a few years ago, I go to the doctor, and it's um, you know, nothing out of the ordinary, just my regular annual physical. And um, my doctor, when the results came in, she gives me a call. Listen, Sean, we need to talk. What's up, doc? Um, you know, I think you need to go on cholesterol medicine. Your numbers came back through the roof. What are you talking about? I feel fine. There's nothing. That she was like, look, your cholesterol is through the roof. African-American men are at higher risk for heart disease and hypertension. This is something you need to do, not now, but right now. So I'm like, whoa, like, what can I do about this? Give me six months. So I go home, it just so happens that my girl is like this health nut. She's into working out and eating healthy and all that good stuff. So I consult with her like, look, I really do not want to go on medicine. Can you help me out here? So yeah, she does the research and you know, I make this commitment to change my lifestyle, to really watch what I eat and start exercising and all that good stuff because I just don't want to go on medicine. So we go out about a week later because now I got to start doing something that I just despise doing, which is exercising me like most people. So we start the running and, you know, I got my little shorts on and here she is. Like I, we started out together, but within like three, four minutes, you know, you started to see her slowly but surely inching way ahead of me. So the competitor in me was like, oh, hell no. I'm not going to let her see me, you know, die out here. I'm catching up to her and I'm going to pass her. So I start trying to run. And before long, I'm like, just, just go. Like, like, just go. So I got to sit on the side of the track looking nuts and feeling worse because here my girl has just left me. She's keep doing what she normally does. And I'm dying. But what did I learn out of that? <laughs> Number one, you know, just like in life, right? We so often want to keep up with people who have been doing what they do for years and years. They got so much more experience than us. Like, we can't keep up with their pace. Like, it's nice that we want to model ourselves after certain people who are, you know, really great at what they do. But they've been doing it for years. Like you, you gotta, you gotta start at, at a slower pace and work your way up to that. And then secondly, what I learned was run your race. It wasn't until I got in my head, look, at the end of the day, I get it. She's been doing this for years longer than me. She might be faster than me, but I am just going to run my race. I will get to the finish line eventually. And after a while, that's what happened. You know, it might take me a little longer to get there, but I got there. And that was the start of me really changing my life. So, you know, on one hand, I didn't have to go on this cholesterol medicine, but two was the start of me, you know, really trying to become healthy. Guys, it is important for you to understand the finish line is the finish line. There's no measure or it's no judgments on how long it takes you to get there. The goal is get there. Like I think about people, right? We can think about these four year degrees. You know, you, 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 you graduate high school, you, you enroll in college, there's a four year degree. Now, granted, some people are just, you know, they're whiz kids. They graduate in three years. Kudos to them, but there are others. Most people have to do an extra semester, an extra two semester. Some people are graduating eight years to get a four year degree. But guess what? At that graduation ceremony, when they call your name and you get to walk across that stage, what is everybody doing? They're clapping it up for you. It didn't matter that you took double the time. So what? It took you eight years to get a four-year degree. You are being celebrated just like the same person who got that four-year degree in three years. No different. It's this movie that I love. And, and this is, you know, not to get off topic, but this is movie that I love. You know, Forrest Gump. I know, like me, many of you guys have seen this movie. And I want to speak about it because it's in line with what we're talking about here. And in the movie, 
Forrest Gump just starts to, you know, run. <laughs> like, like in, in the middle of the movie, he just starts to run for absolutely no reason. And as he's running, you know, they start to show these beautiful scenes where, you know, he's seeing these amazing sunsets and these sunrises. He's seeing these countrysides. He's seeing all of the beauty that life has to offer. And it's important that as you are pacing yourself and you're running your race, learn to enjoy the journey. It's the journey. People are so focused on the finish line. They're not realizing that it is the journey that is the sweetest part of this entire ride. This entire thing that we call life, it's all about the journey. You know, I even think to myself, for so many years, I traveled the country, I traveled the world. I met so many people who other people will be, you know, excited to meet and being in these rooms with these different people and having the opportunity to work alongside them. But guess what? You know, I didn't document any of it. And it's t a terrible thing not to document, you know, the entire journey and then be like me and just have a bad memory. It went in a blink of an eye. So, yes. My focus was, I was laser focused, laser focused on rising in the industry that I was in. But in doing so, I didn't take time to just smell the roses. I didn't take time to really look to left and to the right and just say, yo, I can't believe it. Like, this is my life. Like, I'm really doing things that I dreamed about and, and, and I wanted to do for so long. And here I am. So wherever you are at in your journey, whether you're just starting, you're somewhere in the middle, whatever point you're at, slow down. Slow down. You know you're working toward the finish line, but really enjoy the small victories. Celebrate it with people you love. Celebrate it with your peers and really think to yourself how far you have come. Don't focus on how far you got to go because you're going to get there. Just celebrate the small victories. You know, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And in a marathon, yes, you know, we've all seen marathons and the news covers, you know, the people who come in first place, second place, third place. But after that, they just show a bunch of people crossing the finish line. But it doesn't matter if you come in second to last. Do you understand the person who comes in second to last? There are still crowds and crowds and crowds of people who are like, you did it. You did it. They're waving them in and they're getting celebrated just as much, if not more, than the people who finish first, second, or third because everybody understands the endurance and the commitment it took for these people to Go those 26.2 miles. Run your race. Run your race at your pace. Stay focused and enjoy your journey. Peace and love, guys. Make every move a power move, and I'll catch you all on the next video. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.